it's Tracy. Welcome back. And if you've not visited before, welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. The spring decorating continues. And this week we're doing entryway or hallway, as we say in the UK. We'll be decorating from nature as always, but I'll be mixing in some faux this week. There's going to be some charity shop finds, some repurposing. We'll be doing something with some golf balls and a tennis ball. Everything will be overseen, as always, by my furry supervisor, Bertie. Ah, oh, it's a tough life being a supervisor. Now, come on into the hallway. In we go through the front door. Now, it's quite easy to forget that an entrance hall is a room and it often receives corridor status. But in fact, it's a really important space. It's the place for arrivals, departures. It sets the tone for the rest of the house. So it needs to be welcoming and to leave an impression. So we're doing spring decorating today and I've cleared out all the winter decorating that I did in here, which I don't think I actually shared with you. The last time you've been in the hallway was on the Christmas decorating. So I've left the key pieces in here that I am happy with. They're working and they'll work with the spring decor. Now this console table was such a find. My husband and I had gone down to Rye one Christmas Eve, talk about being organized. We'd had everything sorted. So we thought, right, let's escape the family and go down to Rye. And we went to an antique store and found it just as they were closing up and put it in the back of the car. It came into the house Christmas Eve and then we just, kind of left it there and it's lived here ever since. It works perfectly well in this corner under the stairs. Now I want to brighten this area up a little bit for spring. So the oak mirrors, because of the lovely angle on them, work perfectly with this sloping ceiling, this skeeling. But I'm adding the white mirror and then a wreath that I made with cuttings from the field. Now this bench is not level as you can see. It's two different planks and then a lower section in the middle, which can be a bit tricky for styling. So I thought if I lay a tray over, it then gives me a level surface. Now, as usual, there are vintage old books coming out and a few charity shop finds. Now, you will have seen these in one of my haul videos. I just seem to find earthenware wherever I go and I absolutely love it. So I'm always collecting it. I'm loving this little display here, but I think we need something extra. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I I showed you my storage and this abundance of golf balls that we've got. We've got a professional golfer in the family. And I said, I would love to be able to do something home decor with golf balls. And a viewer kindly suggested that they would be great as moss balls. My son walked by when I was doing this and aside from rolling his eyes, which is the normal response for my activities in the family, he said that better not be one of my Pro V ones. But honestly, it doesn't matter, does it? Because all this can be removed, a good wash of the ball and he'd be none the wiser. I'm just using ordinary tap water here just to spritz it. And then I'll do that periodically, it, you know, when they're in the house, just to stop them from going brown, just to keep them fresh. Any other suggestions for golf ball home decor? Let me know. I think the tray needs something else. So let's pop down to the local supermarket and pick up some more gypsy filler, also known as baby's breath. So we've been using this a lot in the spring decorating. Now I'm down in the field and I want to pick some more pussy willow. This time I'm not going to put the pussy willow in water. I'm actually going to put it with the gypsy filler in empty vases and just let it all dry back. I'll then be able to use both of them again and again throughout the different seasons.
this old ball always lives on here. It was my daughter's. She used it as a stress ball through her exams and she did fabulously well. The vice on the bench really does work. So many people ask me that. Yes, it is a working vice. Although, to be honest with you, apart from gluing things together, I quite often use it just to hang my handbag on. Let's move over to the other side of the hallway. Now, this mirror, I did pick it up at auction and it was a gilt mirror, but it was in really quite a sad, shabby state. So I did this paint effect on it. If you want to see the tutorial on that, it's with some other mirror tutorials in the 37 compilation DIY video. More earthenware. I think this one is actually my favourite of all. And it has a little brother, which you will see later. This vase came from HomeSense and I've not actually done anything to it. And it works well on this dresser with the different tones in it. Now, how to dress it. So I've got four of these long wreaths from Hobby Lobby. Uh, my son brought them back when he was out in Chicago. And I don't know if this is a thing if lots of people do this, but it suddenly came to my mind to wrap it around in a ball, almost forming a nest and keeping these lovely long lengths hanging down. I use these in so many different ways. They have been amazing value and I am absolutely going to buy more next time I get stateside. Well, I'm loving that draping down the pot, but I do think it needs something else. As we're not going to be using any water in the hallway, I can just poke these in. Now I have got plenty of this Pussy Willow in water in the other rooms that I've been decorating. And I'll keep on checking to see if they start to root. If they do, then I'll cut them down, pop them in compost and see if we get some free trees. Another one of Bertie's finds here. He finds all sorts of things to use for interior decorating. Check out some of my other videos to see his examples. So these pheasant feathers, sadly the pheasant was no longer, obviously the fox had had supper, were found on the golf course by Bertie. So we brought them home and the pheasant lives on in my decorations. And to keep that cohesive scheme together through all the rooms, through all the decorating, some more baby's breath. I'm really liking the statement that this really simple piece is making. You don't have to spend a fortune to be able to create statement decor. Just a little bit of imagination and a little bit of foraging. The bust here was actually from HomeSense. Now I've found a couple of busts in there over the years, but they are few and far between. Another freebie here. Now I actually found this on this property. It was when we were doing the big storage shed that I showed you in the last episode and we were digging and that just popped up out of the ground. Somebody suggested it could be French because of the shape of the handle. I don't know, any ideas, let me know. This little mini twig wreath was a home sense fine, just a couple of pounds. And I'm going to squash a candle into it. It's a bit of a squeeze, but it will go in. And then just finish it off with some gypsum filler, with some baby's breath.
back over to the other side of the hallway now and to this lovely big old French piece here. The mirror and the frame, they both came from auction. The dresser is actually about, I think, two to three hundred years old and it weighs a ton. That small piece is a four-man lift. Oh, hello, Bertie's finished his morning nap. He works his way around the beds. Now here is the little brother. Oh, I just love these two pieces. And because this is a French cabinet, I'm gonna add a French jug to it, again, with the gypsum filler and the pussy willow. But what to put next to it? Now, not very long ago, Bertie and I headed down to the coast for a lovely long afternoon walk. And this is Eastbourne in Sussex. It's a place I used to come with the children when they were little. It's a lovely old Victorian seaside town. Anyway, it would be rude not to do a little bit of charity shopping while we're down there. And I came across this piece. Now, £40 is quite a high price point for me, but I've seen pieces like that go for hundreds. There was also this terracotta little jug. Actually, it's not that little. And it's £3. Obvs that had to come home with me. Chatting with the lady in the store, she said somebody had just donated it and they'd been using it as a fruit bowl, hence all the markings inside. Now, I loved it, but the colour is just not my thing. It's way too orange. So I have found this product. Now, I have used lots of these oven cleaners in the past with not very good results at all. It normally ends up a hot mess. So I just about pretty much given up on trying the oven cleaner stripping technique. And then I saw somebody using this product. So it's not one I would be able to get in my local supermarket. I did order it off Amazon and I will link it below. So I gave it a good spray and then went over with a wire brush, really working the product into all those little nooks and crannies. I only left it on for 20 minutes and then I gave it a really good hose down. I made sure that I was nowhere near any plants and when I'd finished, I actually went over again and again with the gravel to make sure it washed right down into the drive. I then repeated the process. And after a night drying on the range, here we go. Isn't this just beautiful? So easy off, would I recommend it? Absolutely for a product like this, but with all the precautions because it is incredibly toxic. So make sure that you protect your eyes, you protect your skin, you protect the environment, you keep animals away. You're not silly. All the normal stuff that you would do when you're using chemicals. back over to the other side. My, we are zigzagging about today. So now we're gonna go on to the mantle styling. I've got a cunning plan, but we need to go down to my big storage shed. Oh, by the way, this porch and the big front door, that's going to be the decorating for the next episode. So don't forget to turn on your notifications, subscribe if you haven't already. I think we're up to about 70% of people watching me who are not subscribed. So it costs you nothing, but it really helps the channel. So do hit that subscribe button if you can, please. You saw the last episode, episode two of the spring decorating series. You'll have seen inside this shed before. This is where I store everything that's waiting for a makeover or that's not going to get damaged by being outside in a shed. 
Now, the piece I'm looking for is this frame. It had glass in it and it was broken several years ago. It's just been sat there, so I don't really like the colour of it. I'm going to take off the fixings and then use the sander really just to give it a good clean and take off a little bit of that paint. So after a good wipe down, I'm going to make a colour wash with cocoa, Annie Sloan cocoa. Love this colour, such a lovely warm neutral. Just using a little bit of tap water, the spatula and giving it a good mix. I'm going to use just an old flat brush, you don't need anything fancy to do this. And then just slap it on darlings, that's pretty much a colour wash. You can use a rag to pull back if you've put too much on but generally just have fun with it. It's quite chilly, so I'm gonna use the heat gun to dry it. You could use a hairdryer. And then to finish off, I'm gonna slather it in white wax. And look at that, it's a perfect fit. Now you may think, oh, that ceiling's not straight. Well, yeah, you'd be absolutely right. Nothing is straight in this house. It's all old and wonky. Even the new parts, I was adamant I didn't want everything absolutely straight. It's imperfectly perfect. Now I have an idea for something else I'd like to put on this mantle. My husband surprised me with these two windows. They're from a 1930s house, actually his mother's house. She's 91, fiercely independent, still drives, plays bridge every day for money. And she decided she wanted to change her windows at 91 years old. Anyway, he'd said, well, let me have those because Tracy will love them. He knows me far too well. He knows he doesn't need to bring me flowers and diamonds, just a good bit of salvage. Oh, yes, please. I want to create more of a distressed effect on them. So I'm using a heat gun just to lift up the paint. She's been very good over the years with house maintenance. So of course they're all very well painted when actually I would love them all to be flaky and chippy. Now one thing, if you're using a heat gun for this, keep the heat gun away from the glass. Otherwise, trust me, through bitter experience, the glass will crack. Once I was happy with the finish, I gave them a really good wash and then left them on the range overnight to dry. But I have a confession. Oh, I am absolutely gutted. I was propping them up and one of them slipped and caught at the edge of a rock and just slightly cracked. I mean, honestly, I could have slapped myself with a wet lettuce leaf. I was gutted. Anyway, let's keep that our secret. Don't tell anyone. And remember the three pound terracotta jug? There we go, washed up beautifully. All the marks came off it. I like the tone of the color with the window. So we're not gonna call the window orange, we're going to call it terracotta. In this corner, I'm gonna add my great big metal star. It came from Kempton Market and it was at a time when my son was away in Texas. So I thought it was quite apt and I had to buy it.
I'm going to add an auction fine torche. I went through a phase of buying lots of these. I painted it, I stripped it, and now I've white waxed it and adding on a big vase that I've done my stone effect to. Regular viewers will remember this chair. It's a set of four. They were five pounds each, bright red in a terrible condition. And I covered them all in chalk paint and wax and they've worn really well. This giant candlestick was a bright orange orange pine charity shop find that I covered in chalk paint and white wax. Now to our little reading nook area. It's an odd part of the house that there used to be a door where that heart is there. And I decided that actually we'd just turn it into a little reading nook, which is somewhere, it's just, it's very light. It's perfect to sit with the light behind you and read a book. This big vase I fell out of favour with the colour. So I used up lots and lots of old spray paint, just kept on applying it wet on wet and rubbing sand in. Took weeks to dry, but I love the effect of it. The colours of the books that I'm adding here have been specifically chosen to match the colours in the window frame. This is a little terracotta pot that I've changed the colour of with chalk paint and wax and I just think it needs something extra in it. Now, any ideas? What's that Bertie, a tennis ball? Well, bring it here, let's have a go, see if it fits. I think it's a little bit too big but hang on, I've got a cunning plan. Let's cover it in moss and we have an even bigger moss ball. Bertie, you are a freaking genius. What an amazing Labrador you are. Oh yeah, time for the butt scratch dance. This could go on for some time. Okay, we've got to carry on decorating. Sorry. As we are approaching Easter, then these branches are ideal to be hanging some Easter eggs on. Now, I always think buy your seasonal decor out of season. So I bought these in a sale after an Easter holiday and they were massively reduced. I think I paid about 20% of the overall price. Yellow and blue didn't really work, so they can go away or maybe they'll go into a makeover. And the final touch here is for Bertie. He loves to lay in this spot, particularly as the sun comes round. So a sheepskin rug is always a welcome addition where he's concerned. Quick vacuum and I think we're done.
thank you so much for joining Bertie and I, and I do hope you'll visit again soon. Take care.